Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out the new Kangaroo Plus Mini PC and this is not a deja vu moment. Uh, we did look at the original Mini PC from Kangaroo only a few months ago uh, and in my opinion the original was really a transformative product uh, and is still the best possible value you can get in a Windows 10 PC. Uh, the original here costs $99, has 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, an Atom X5 quad-core Z8500 processor from Intel, performs exceptionally well, and it had a full Windows 10 license on board. Uh, if you're looking for something cheap and effective to give to a, a kid or a loved one who's not really all that into uh, computers and just wants something that works, uh, you can't beat this. This really is, in my opinion, the best possible deal you can get right now. Now, when I did my original review, which is linked above and down below in the description, a lot of folks were looking for something with more RAM and more storage because you know, 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage is good for a lot of general consumer use, but enthusiasts want to push it a little bit further. So what they've done is come up with the Plus. This is the same exact computer, except it has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, and it comes in at $169. That is the price that I paid for it at Newegg.com. So I bought this in my own funds. I have no financial relationship with InFocus, who makes this device, uh, or their kangaroo division. Uh, so all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is going to look at this video before it is posted. And these are the disclaimers that I do now on all my videos, because I think it's important for people to know uh, what the relationship of the YouTuber is to the company that uh, is being covered in the video. I just legitimately like these things. I think they are a great deal. Now, $169 for this one. You do not get the operating system though on this one, even though you do get it for $99 on the original. And I have a couple of theories about this. Uh, this is really a volume play. You're not going to make a lot of money selling a computer for $99, but if you sell a lot of computers for $99, which I suspect they are probably doing, uh, you will make a good margin once you get the volume up. Enthusiasts are not as numerous as general consumers might be, so I think they're selling less of these and therefore made less, which means that their cost per unit is higher comparatively, so they probably couldn't squeeze in uh, that Windows license and still kept it under $200. So uh, if this thing never existed at $99, $169 for a computer configured like this one is, is a tremendous deal still because you're getting it from a name brand, not some anonymous company on AliExpress or something, and you'll have some support behind it also. So I think it's a very good deal. Uh, so check out my original review if you want to see all the benchmarks and all the word processing and all the other tests that we usually do on our computers because this one will largely perform the same. So I'm going to do a little bit of a different focus in this video. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the differences between having 2 gigs of RAM and 4 gigs of RAM. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, we're also going to look at its BIOS and see how you can configure it. And we'll also look and see what other alternative operating systems you can install on it in case you don't want to buy uh, the Microsoft Windows 10 operating system. So let's get into that RAM comparison first and then we'll take a look at the other stuff. So we're going to start with the 2 gigabyte model that is running with uh, Minecraft as well as a YouTube video in Google Chrome. And I want you to take a look at the memory usage here. Uh, it's about 91 to 93 percent as it's doing both tasks at the same time. The result is that it really starts lagging quite a bit. The video especially doesn't uh, function all that great on there. And the reason is, is that we're maxing out the memory of the computer. So what happens in Windows is that when you use up all the memory in the computer, it has to swap things out of the physical RAM, the chips, and put it onto uh, what it's essentially is its hard drive, the eMMC storage that's built into it. That is a very slow process and therefore it will make your computer run slower. So the processor is capable of running faster, except it's not getting its data fast enough to process, which is why uh, when you have two gigabytes of RAM, you can't often do a lot of things at the same time. So now let's take a look at what happens on the four gigabyte model, uh, doing the same exact activity, running Minecraft, uh, as well as uh, Chrome running my YouTube video here. And you can see it's not perfect, but it is a lot better. And also check out the memory performance here. We're looking at uh, 55 to 61% give or take of memory usage versus maxing it out on the original one. And there is a good reason for that. When you have four gigabytes of RAM, there's more room in the physical memory to store the data that is currently being processed. Uh, and that is why it's running better. And that is really as simple as that. So there really isn't much to see on the BIOS here. There's not much to configure. You've got some TPM settings here. Uh, you also have a little virtualization toggle. Uh, the one thing or two things I did change was the boot delay time. I did increase this a little bit to six seconds. So I have some time to hit uh, the F2 key to get into the BIOS if I wanted to adjust something. 
Uh, you can also hit F10 and choose which device to boot from. So for example, if you had an operating system installed on the internal storage, but also wanted to boot from a uh, external device, you could hit F10 and pick the device you want to boot from at the time you turn the computer on. Uh, so that was something that you might want to set on there. I also turned the uh, secure boot uh, off so that I could load up alternative operating systems. So that might be one other thing to check off on your list when you get it going. Uh, you can also set the EFI boot order here in the BIOS. So if you always wanted it to default to uh, the USB first, you could do that. So whenever, whenever a USB device is plugged in, it'll go from that first uh, before going over to the internal storage. That's another thing you can do there. But that is uh, pretty much it for configuration. Not much to see here, uh, but it is a, uh, at least got some kind of BIOS settings you can adjust. But let's take a look now to see uh, what operating systems you can boot successfully on here. And unfortunately at the moment, there aren't too many. Now I was able to get Ubuntu working on here without any issues whatsoever. It even found all my Wi-Fi drivers, the audio drivers, the video drivers, everything just worked on the first boot uh, with no aggravation, which was great. So a very seamless uh, experience here if you download that uh, disk image and get it up and running. In fact, I'm running mine right now just off of an SSD connected via USB 3 uh, to the Kangaroo right now. So uh, the web performance feels close to what it does on Windows. Uh, you also get some free uh, Office software uh, built into the Ubuntu installation here. So we have LibreOffice 5. We've got a word processor here, a, a spreadsheet that's very functional. So you can uh, easily get a lot of work done here without having to pay anything for the operating system and just kind of run off of that $169 entry point. I should note though that I was not able to get other alternative operating systems working on here. So I didn't try everything of course, but I tried Remix OS, which is that awesome new uh, variant of Android and that runs off of Android x86. You can check out my video of that one linked above. Really great uh, new platform that I've been having fun playing with. Does not boot up on here at all. It gets you to that uh, first screen where you can choose which version of it you want to run and then after you hit the key, it just kind of locks up. Uh, this does have an EFI BIOS. I was running the new EFI version of Remix. Uh, no luck uh, on that one. I was also trying to get Open ELEC working, which is basically a boot up to Kodi uh, operating system and that one didn't boot either. So anything running Ubuntu, I think is going to be fine. There's a lot of Ubuntu variants out there, uh, but everything else that I'm trying so far beyond Windows and just the uh, vanilla Ubuntu here is not working. So just keep that in mind as you are uh, experimenting with this machine or thinking of purchasing one, you're gonna have some limitations initially. I would imagine that BIOS updates in the future might improve its compatibility, but uh, right now this was the only open source operating system that I was able to get working on there. But that is uh, the Kangaroo Plus Mini PC, a little bit more than the original, but uh, you get the RAM and the storage that you might want. And I think for me, it's going to become my new uh, little utility PC, even though I have to get a Windows license to uh, run Windows on it. I do think having the extra RAM and storage, at least for me, is going to be worth taking a look at. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including gold level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.